Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Thank you for joining us at Celebrating Act 2, where my partner John Coleman and I are going to talk about stuff that's important to our health with Dr. Liz Lister. Who better to talk about it with, right? Mm. <laughs> I love that technical term, Art, stuff. Stuff. <laughs> stuff, yeah. to our health. <laughs> I don't know that what I've got for you, Dr. Liz, is important to my health, but we've talked about this before. You've talked, you've mentioned melatonin, and I happen to be a, uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but I do take it on occasion uh, to help me sleep. But I wanted to ask, what is it? Is it an herb? Is it, a, does it come from cows? I, don't, I have no idea. What is melatonin? It works great for me. Excellent. Well, I'm really happy that it works well for you. And that's a very good question. And guess what? It's a hormone. No kidding. It where, is. Where, where do they get it from? Do they produce it chemically? Uh, or? Well, I will tell you that it occurs in humans. It's made by a gland in our brain called the pineal gland. The pineal gland sits near behind the eyeballs. And so when light is coming through our eyes into the brain, and we're perceiving light that shuts down the production of melatonin. So at night when it's dark, that is when the production of melatonin turns on. That's What's why we really can't sleep. That's why we can't sleep with our eyes open. Not usually, at least not in daylight. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. What was fascinating that I learned recently is that plant plants also have melatonin. Oh, really? Yes, they do. It's not clear exactly why. However, it does have an antioxidant effect. It has all kinds of health benefits. So we'll, we can get into that a little bit more, but it's made by the brain at night while we sleep. And as with most hormonal production, it decreases as we get older. Most people report that they sleep fewer hours yeah. uh, as, as we get older. I know that's the case for me. I talk about teenagers when they're gonna be able to sleep for 12 hours, no problem. Yeah, uh, and that does not last throughout life, so that's okay. We have other things to do besides sleep, so that's okay. So, are there any contraindications uh, for melatonin uh, if you're taking blood pressure medicine or uh, other uh, uh, medications? Are there one or two medications you should watch out for if you want to uh, uh, try melatonin? Because I know it's not prescribed; it's over yeah. the counter. Yeah. That's right. It is over the counter. And, you know, it's really fortunate that it really doesn't conflict with any medications directly. We can talk about the dosing because it's available in a wide variety of doses. Again, because it has this antioxidant effect, I am aware of people who take many milligrams of melatonin every night. Uh, a typical wow. dose might be maybe one milligram, and it can be either under the tongue or it can be a tablet that you swallow, and those have different effects. So under the tongue tends to go into the bloodstream more quickly and have a faster onset. So with the if, so if you're having a challenge falling asleep, it's usually better to use the melatonin under the tongue versus if it's staying asleep, then it could be a supplement that you swallow. But luckily, it does not have, to your question, real contraindications with any medication that I am aware of. Okay, that's, well, that's good, good news. to hear. Yes. Um, now, I just use it occasionally. Um, sure. Just when I feel like I'm, I can't sleep or something. And I generally have to take it bef well before bedtime. I, it it yes. seems to need an hour or two to kick in for me. But then yes, that's right. I end up sleeping a good... 10 hours if I, if I'm not careful. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. Well, that's, that's really good. That's good for your brain to regenerate. It's been studied and shown to be very helpful in terms of jet lag and correcting mm. that sleep wake cycle. Oh, that's so very helpful. I'm even aware of a recommendation to take, uh, well, there's certain medications they might have a, or supplements, I should say, that have very small doses of melatonin, but that you take as you travel across time zones, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of ways to do that. However, it definitely regulates the sleep-wake cycle. And by the way, we're not born with it ready to go. That's why babies do not sleep right away. Uh, mm -hmm. The first thing that babies do by about the third month 
is develop that rhythm, that sleep wake rhythm. Yeah. It's also related to the seasonal and yearly rhythms. For example, animals that hibernate. That has to do with changes in their melatonin levels. Or animals that change from daylight to uh, standard time. Yeah. <laughs> That's another health topic. We could talk about that another time. <laughs> the health impact of the time change. It's actually not good for us because it messes up the sleep-wake cycle. Right. So melatonin can be helpful to, to restore it. So now you mentioned other benefits. Are, that, are there any unusual yes. benefits that we might, all of this yes. sounds logical, if you will. That's right, exactly. Right, because the quality of sleep is so important to our health. And sure. by the way, when people talk about how fabulous melatonin is and that everyone should take it, there are people who, there's a book about melatonin that refers to all the miraculous benefits. However, I'm not sure that that's not because of getting good, consistent sleep. Huge health benefits to getting good, consistent sleep. So a little bit of a of difficulty keeping those uh, distinct from each other. But yes, melatonin appears to help lower blood pressure. To your question, Art, a moment ago. It's also an antioxidant. Um, it, it, and some studies suggest that it's even more potent than vitamin E as an antioxidant. Wow. Mm. Mm -hmm. So there are people out there who advocate taking it every single day. Another comment I always like to say about melatonin is that a lot of times patients tell me, oh, I've tried it and it didn't work for me. Or they'll say, I tried it and it gave me very vivid dreams. Mm. And for that reason, they don't like it. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And there's a new sleeping medication out on the market that was given to my husband recently to try. And it, he did not like it because it, it, what it does is it binds and activates melatonin receptors. And he had that effect of the much too vivid dreams. One of my theories about that is that it's for some people who've been chronically not sleeping well, that the, all of a sudden they are being given or they're taking melatonin and then they're actually having those sleeping cycles and getting to that deep sleep and then up to the dream sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But what mm. I, what I advise is that if someone has tried melatonin and it didn't work for them, very interestingly, often if they use less, it might work better. Interesting. Very interesting. It's very yeah. individual how people respond to it. And also it helps regulate weight, oh. help people help helping manage their weight. Now, again, is that because it helps with sleep? It might right. actually have its own benefit in its interaction with the other hormone that regulates appetite, which is the hormone leptin. Lots of interesting things to learn about melatonin. Wow, I'll say, oh, I might start taking it more often. <laughs> Me too. Wait, hey, that brings up another question: Is um, is melatonin? Is it possible to overdose melatonin? What would be the uh, negative great. effects of too much? Uh, how much is? Which is where? Where does it approach too much? Yeah. All right, and you gentlemen know that I work in the world of anti-aging and regenerative medicine, and because of that, I will tell you that there are people in that world who routinely recommend taking 10 or more milligrams every single day wow. because of these purported benefits. I don't necessarily recommend that. I don't do that myself. I don't necessarily recommend that to everyone. However, because of its benefit to the immune system, again, it's helping with sleep. The more we learn about all the cleanup work that the body does while we sleep, the more that whatever helps our sleep uh, is going to be useful and important. Yeah. Yeah. The pills I take are five milligram uh, pills and I, you know, maybe once every three weeks or something, I just feel like I, sure. I can use sure. melatonin. But also it's very hard to overdose it, it, to, to your question. It's hard to overdose the worst side effect really, or the only one that I really have had people tell me about, well, besides the vivid dreams, is feeling groggy the next day. Yes. 
in which case yeah. it's easy to dial back the dose. But it's, it is difficult to overdo it. I really don't want people to worry about it. If they want to give it a try, right. nothing bad will happen in terms of health adverse effect. Yeah. Well, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful little tool once in a while. I, I'm not the kind of person who would take it every day. But, you but, know, it's uh, kind of interesting, John, as you uh, forget whether you said it, it, sometimes it doesn't kick in quick enough or something like that. Maybe, are you no. taking the pills or the ones under the tongue? Yeah. So you yeah. might want to switch off. If sure. in other words. That's right. Yeah. Well, it depends. Dr. Liz, this is, a, again, great information. Great information. It's I important have, to be informed. Yeah, one more. Oh, really? One Please. more. What, one more important point of information. But wait, but wait. A, but wait. But wait. There's more. There's more. <laughs> Only one more comment for right now. And that is melatonin is a particularly important supplement to make sure you're taking a good quality one. We've talked about this from time to time. And a lot of times it doesn't matter as much. However, I, I found a study from not just a few years ago that looked at a wide variety of, of the supplements that you get like at a regular a grocery store or uh, a regular type of store, Target or, or that type of thing, that they found that 70% of the bottles they looked at and the brands they looked at had as little as 10% of the active ingredient of melatonin. Oh, yeah. Really shocking. And some of the products they looked at had four times wow. the milligrams that it said it had in there. So this is a particular one. We've talked about fish oil as very important to yep. get a good quality. Same with melatonin. If you have not gotten a good effect, you may have gotten not a good product. Yeah. That's, well, for, that's our, for our audience, I believe, um, uh, Dr. Liz, uh, you, uh, along with your practice, also have researched this and uh, have uh, selected some uh, uh, hormonal and supplemental, uh, like fish oil and other things that uh, you have checked thoroughly so that if people are interested, why don't you just give them the name of your website so that they can go there and take a look. Sure, absolutely. So my website is drlizmd.com, D-R-L-I-Z-M-D.com. And I have a link there to the supplements that I recommend for my patients. They're pharmaceutical grade. Uh, and I recently changed the platform that I use for the supplements so that I'm able to recommend quite a few other brands. I'm I, I'm less limited in the brands that I can recommend. So it gives me more variety to suggest. And also there's protocols in there. So there's a sleep protocol that people can take a look and see the melatonin that I recommend as well as other supplements that can be helpful using natural ingredients to support oh, that, sleep. That'll be good. That's Thank important. You. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, sleep is so important. Absolutely. Yeah, good. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.